Hello everyone, today there was a playoff match held for Fabiano Caruana and Wesley So for a spot in the London Chess Classic later this year. So this game that I'm about to show you is game 2 of the rapid match. Fabiano had the white pieces and Wesley had the black pieces. So the game starts off with d4, knight to f6, c4, e6, knight to c3, and bishop to b4, the Nimzo Indian defense. Caruana goes for g3, preparing the Fianchetto, uh, to Fianchetto his bishop to g2, castles, we have bishop to g2, d5, knight to f3, pawn takes c4, castles, knight to c6, and here queen to a4, with the idea of playing a3 and recapturing the pawn. Also, queen to b5 is possible, just regaining the pawn here. So uh, we have knight to d5, so pressuring this knight here on c3, queen to c2, dropping back and defending, and bishop to e7. So the bishop has done its job on e4, so uh, it can come to f6 later in the future and support some maybe e5 break. So here we have rook to d1, bishop to d7, e4 gaining space in the center, and knight c to b4. Attacking the queen, so the queen has moved. And here Caruana plays queen to d2. So what's wrong with the more natural queen to e2? So if queen to e2 here, Wesley can simply play something like knight captures, and after pawn captures, simply knight to d3, and this knight will be quite annoying. So if uh, for if you play queen to d2, then this idea is no longer possible, because after knight takes, you simply capture with the queen. And well, you, you can't really play knight here because, well, you can actually, but that simply falls the queen captures on c4. And you would have to trade. And white simply has a lead in development. So queen to d2 is more accurate. And we have knight to b6. The knight drops back as it was under fire from the pawn on e4. Corona plays knight to e5. Knight to c6. Challenging this knight, knight captures, bishop captures, and queen to c2. So maybe with ideas of pushing d5. We have f5 from Wesley, so trying to break open, open the f-file and also maybe trade bishops. a4, so maybe threatening to play a5 and kicking the knight. We have pawn captures, bishop captures, bishop captures, and here queen captures on e4. So White Black has managed to open the f-file, but this pawn is a little bit weak uh, as a result of this. So queen to d7, defending the pawn. And here, uh, White can actually simply capture the pawn here on b7. Well, this does allow rook a to b8, and after queen retreats, Black does have some pressure here, but White also has pressure on e6. So this is a possible way to play this. But Caruana doesn't do that. Instead, here he plays d5. We have pawn captures on d5, knight captures, knight captures, and here rook captures and queen to c6, so pinning this rook. Rook to d4, unpinning. Bishop to c5, so uh, putting pressure here. And white is going to be down a pawn. Queen captures, pawn captures, rook captures, and bishop captures on f2, check. So black is up a pawn currently, but this, these pawns are a bit weak. They are double and isolated. So after king to g2, c5 from Wesley. So black is actually okay in this position. He uh, c5 protecting the pawn and also the bishop can sit comfortably on d4. And here a very nice move from Caruana. He plays rook to a2. So uh, rook to a2 with the idea of activating the rook via b4. And if you play something like bishop to f f4, trying to activate the rook, then here simply bishop to d4 from black, and there is pressure on b2. Well, defending uh, simply doesn't work because rook here. So after rook to a2, we have bishop to d4 because b4 was threatened but b4 anyway, and you can't capture because that loses the bishop. So here, rook a to d8, 
we have pawn captures, so materials material is now even again, and c6. Uh, white was going to play bishop f4, so uh, black plays c6 anyway to uh, protect the pawn first. So bishop to f4, rook after e8, and here rook to d2. So attacking this bishop, the bishop has to retreat. And rook to d6. So Caruana gained a little bit of progress, managed to put his rook on quite an active square. And you don't want to capture the rook because that simply allows a pass pawn for white. So after rook to d6, we have rook to c8 defending this pawn. h4 from Caruana, trying to provoke uh, black on the king's side. So h5 from Wesley stopping that. King to f3, we have rook to e1 trying to get some counterplay, and rook to e4, offering a rook trade, and you don't want to capture if you're black because after rook takes e4, simply king takes e4, and white is simply better in this position because his king is very active, and also there is constant pressure on c6, and the king will soon go into, into g6, so definitely a bad position for black. So here Wesley plays rook to a1, uh, looking at this pawn, and also you can give checks to the king. Rook to d7, rook to a3 check, king to g2, and here a5, because uh, this pawn was under attack. You could go for the pawn with uh, rook to a7, but uh, Caruana probably doesn't want to do that because it allows rook to d8, and black does get some counterplay. So that is why he plays bishop. That's why he plays bishop to d6 first, just blocking this file, and the next move is going to be rook f7 if allowed. We have king to h7, rook to a7, and here bishop to a3. So just keeping an eye on that. King to h3, rook to a2, and here rook to c4 attacking the bishop. So bishop goes to b4 and rook to f4, so threatening rook to f7, and looking at this pawn. So bishop to c3, rook to e7, nice move from Caruana, so rook to e7 doesn't, uh, with the idea of not allowing this rook to activate. We have rook to d8, and here it is tempting to play bishop to e5, but in fact this totally turns the tables and gives black the advantage, because simply rook to d2 and well this is just nasty so here rook to e6 from Caruana we have rook to d7 and rook to f5 so attacking this pawn and well this provokes g6 uh, which weakens this pawn so here you can actually play rook to g5 and well black has to be a bit passive and go rook to g7 then after something like bishop f4, captures, captures, and here, <clears throat> well, it's a nice position for white because you simply can go rook to a6, uh, staying behind this pawn, and also <clears throat> the bishop here helps to support the pawn up to c7. So this is definitely better for white. But here, uh, he doesn't go for that after g6, Caruana plays rook to f3. We have bishop to d4, rook to e4, bishop back to g7, rook f to e3, rook to b7, so threatening to double on the, on the second rank, and Caruana doesn't allow it, he plays rook to e2. We have rook captures, rook captures, and here bishop to d4, so putting some pressure here. Rook to e4, rook to b4 defending the bishop, and here rook to f4 from Caruana. Here there was a stronger move in the position, uh, it was the move rook to e7, but this was a rapid game so they probably couldn't spot uh, a lot of things, maybe they were in time pressure. So the idea was uh, is to go rook c7 and capture the pawn. So after the king moves, simply rook c7, rook captures, rook captures, rook to c4, uh, you have to put the rook behind the passed pawn. And white is going to do the same. But in this position, white can simply uh, push his pawn. And well, after c7, there's no way to stop rook to a8 check 
followed by queening. And of course, you can also take this pawn. So here you would probably have to give up your bishop. Bishop takes c5 and allow rook to c6 and something like this. So rook to e7 is uh, probably a better move for white in this position. But rook to f4 from Caruana. We have bishop to g1. So uh, with ideas of rook to b2 and rook to h2. Rook to f1, chasing the bishop away first. Bishop to d4, and here Caruana goes for the plan I mentioned earlier. Uh, rook check and king moves, and here rook to, rook to c7. So they exchange pawns. King comes up, uh, tries, the king is trying to come closer and defend this dangerous pawn. Rook to a6, we have king to e6, bishop to f4 check, king to d5, here is c6, we have rook to c4, so putting the rook behind the pawn, but this bishop does a very good job of supporting it. c7, a4, rook to a8, bishop to b2, c8 queen, rook capture c8, rook capture c8, and in this position, Wesley so resigned the game. So what happens after a3? Well, simply bishop to a1, sorry, bishop to c1 seals the deal for white. Uh, because after capture, simply rook captures and the rook guards the queening square. So Caruana managed to win this playoff match with a score of one and a half out of two points. So that quali qualifies him for a spot in the London Chess Classic later this year. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please subscribe for more future content. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.